Well, I'm very excited, you guys. I have my first stand-up date. I know, Esther, you had yours. I'm going to the House of Comedy in Minnesota, and that's going to be May 6th through 9th. So it's a th one show on Thursday, two Friday, two Saturday, and one on Sunday. And I am so excited to get back on stage. So get your tickets. I'm going to post on my Instagram. Do you know that Santino and Bobby are trying to pit you against my poor little niece? I have gotten so many messages <laughs> in the last week that your niece is talking shit about me. No, she's not. That your she's niece wants to fight me. No, they're just they're making not. it up so y'all think You that. know Jules. Jules is like, Ate There's Esther, no. no. I Are love you, Ate of Esther. Of course I'm like, shut up. Like, I... I know uh, let's that. call Jules right now. Let's uh Are they recording? Of course. Okay, hang on. She's not gonna pick up. Tell them to pick up. Have to come on. Jules, I have a question for you. Are you guys recording? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you is it true that you wanna fight Esther? Yeah. Can I tell Oh my god, they're holding a gun to her head right now. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Here's I'm gonna pass you to Esther. Hang on. Hi, Jules. Um Hi, Esther. <laughs> So the past few days, I have gotten, some would say hundreds of messages from people <laughs> saying that you want to fight me and that you've been <laughs> talking smack about me. But I feel like you and I, we've always really gotten along. Seen eye to eye because she's a child. You know, I, I know there was that one time I needed you to move the car. Um, yeah. I feel like we've always had a good chemistry and just a mutual respect, but I just wanted to see like what's going on. Um, it's either Bobby and um Andrew's fault. They want they want us to fight, so I feel like I need to fight you. <laughs> why why do they want us to fight? Because they said that I would win and that you would <laughs> They said that you would win and what? They said that you were weak. Oh <laughs> yeah. How much I'm do you sorry. weigh? Um, I'm one fifteen. Oh yeah, oh, she'll really? crush you. She'll crush you. Yeah. But you're so skinny. Would you be mad if I was voting rooting for her? <laughs> uh, first of all, I'm not physically fighting anyone. You're not. Without Neither a is. lawyer present. <laughs> no, that's what I was gonna say. You'll fight her in court. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, I'm gonna hand it over to to your aunt Coloco because I don't really know what else to say. If I could just be very, very clear about this, uh, this fight would make so much more money than the Jake Paul fight. This would make, do you want money or not? Jules? <laughs> now, before you get cocky, may I remind you that I have seen you box? And it makes me ashamed to call you family. So <laughs> don't start fights you can't finish. Because let me tell you something about Esther. She'll file some paperwork and she'll come get you. She may walk out of a Barry's boot, boot camp, but she did walk in. She is it, okay? low key. If she puts hands on you, I I mean, you're you're my niece and all, but I might have my money on her. So prepare yourself, okay? To have some yeah, really no, little bruises. Practicing with Nick. Well, let me tell you what you don't know about Esther. <laughs> Again, she's a fucking ankle biter. So yeah, she's an actual she, dog. Uh, from the age of four to five, she she thought she was an actual dog. So that's what you're up against. So think about it real deep and hard, okay? Okay, dog. Okay, love you. Bye-bye. Bye. I swear the poisonous shit that Bobby and Santina put in that poor Toxic. girl's head. Yeah, Toxic. she shouldn't be around them. <laughs> she <laughs> I blame the ginger. <laughs> Can I say something semi-creepy? Yeah. Okay. Always. The way you're dressed today is like the exact way that I'm very attracted to women when they're dressed like this. Like a boy, you mean? Boyish. Boyish. Like ripped, specifically ripped jeans and like a casual, like a vintagey, cool, like basic top. Mm -hmm. And then long, dark hair. Like there's, and your socks, like it's, there's something very, I think my real, the real men out there know what I'm talking about. This is a very sexy look. Can I guess why you like the tears in the jeans? 
Why? Because they come up to your height and it looks like you just <laughs> start to tear her clothes off at the knee. I do you have a tear right in my crotch. Like this isn't a regular Esther tear. Esther would have had to jump up for that one. Also, I, I'd like to point out because I'm sort of anti super torn jeans. I'm not into like pre-distressed jeans. Huh. I These jeans were ripped naturally. I've had them since I was 15 years old. That's such a funny thing Wait, to bring up. <laughs> I'm so jealous because I fucking read a magazine article once that said Halle Berry kept a je- pair of jeans since she was 15 so mm-hmm. she could always know that she fit into them so then i was i read that when i was 15 i was like i'm gonna stay this pair of jeans but now i can't find them so it's like my goal i have to find they're a toddler too (laughs) (laughs) i can't oh my god i want you guys to actually wear these jeans because they are so soft but so fragile at this point like any movement it's so sad though for me like by the way i would bust them and then all of a sudden the leg would be flapping open And also when some when jeans are baggy on one person and then the other person puts them on and it's like, well, I guess these pants aren't traveling, sisters. <laughs> oh boy. But the best is when a ripped jean has like a secretly sexy rip, like how you have so you can kind of see your underwear. Or like, do you know the yeah. ones where it's like right under the butt cheek? I have a, well, a couple of those. That to me, to me, is sexier than lingerie. How do you, mm. well, let's be real, lingerie. Has that ever been in your life? That was <laughs> no. so weird. It's too much, too big of a swing. Do you but, guys wear laundry? La- no. Laundry. Do you, you guys can't guys even wear say laundry? It? Laundry? Yes. Laundry? <laughs> we wear laundry. She's like, my, mom look calls her. It, my mom calls it <laughs> lingerie. Aww. It's so cute. Darling, maybe you should try to impress Bobby with some lingerie. I love that even your mom's like, listen, you've let yourself go. <laughs> You're does. gonna lose this. You're gonna lose this situation. No, and you know, Eric Griffin once told me something that I'll never forget, and it pissed me off to no end, which is, um, maybe you should walk around the house in more lacy things. Ew. Well, Why Eric Griffin, say that? Ew. No, Eric Griffin notoriously says the most triggering, annoying <laughs> things like a man could say. I once, we did a pilot for a show where we were gonna like be Uber drivers that were send, taking people to like go get their boyfriends back or something. I was like, so it was this idea that Eric's like, this is gonna sell and I'm like, I don't even know what the idea is. It makes it. sense that you and Eric were cast as Uber drivers. <laughs> <laughs> And also, when do you have two Uber drivers? <laughs> That's how bad we are. We needed a, like a two. helper. <laughs> but but we were like, you know, had to do these like fake tests where we're like pretending to drive. And I can't tell you how many times I was genuinely screaming at him like, Eric! Because he was like, women are so shallow. I'm like, my boyfriend is 350 pounds. I'm shallow. <laughs> It was so annoying. I do love him. Meanwhile, he has like a model girlfriend. I'm like, oh, we're shallow. I think that's what happened. I think he looked at his his own model-esque, perfect-looking girlfriend, and then looked at me, and he probably thought, Bobby's my best friend. You could probably try a little bit harder. I think he was trying to help Bobby out. But Bobby, what he doesn't know is that Bobby doesn't like no, that stuff. No, it's weird. That's, that's a specific guy likes lingerie. Yeah. yeah. Lingerie is like hard because I, I feel like I the way I picture it is never the way I look in it. And it's so traumatic when you see yourself and like the also, if they, super, it just. It, lingerie in your size is literally pedophilic. I mean, that's like, <laughs> ch- they don't have come in children's sizes. I like the idea that like the garter like comes up to it here on you. <laughs> like. I have a I have a, pr- a proposition. The, you put the crotch the crotchless part over your head. <laughs> I have a proposition. I think that we should work through our lingerie trauma, and we should have a lingerie episode. Okay. Okay. So we bring our fav. Well, we bring what we would never wear a type of lingerie that we would never wear in the bedroom. Do we get it for each other? No. 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 You will bring me like. Titless, <laughs> vaginaless, like nipple covers. That's what I'll bring you. <laughs> Wait, can I? Can we also do a bathing suit day? Because I have real bathing suit trauma. Right. Can we do like a bathing suit episode? Can I get like twelve weeks? <laughs> no. Before that, no, we don't get to just spring it on. I think that's the point. We, yeah. We just spring it on, okay, and, and we love the body we're yes, in. Yes, we'll spring it on in with a side bush, weeks. everything. You know what I will recommend, which I would do, is like high waist. I don't need any recommendations from you. High waist. <laughs> high waist. High waist. High waist, you know, does not look good on me at all. It oh my takes God. Away. I <laughs> because promise you're you guys. a Barbie doll. <laughs> because it, it, no, because you know how She's the, like, it covers my like sick hard ass. Yeah, it's not good for me. <laughs> it's not. It makes me look even boxier than I am. Because if, you know, the, the trend of like the really high cut bikini. Yeah. And, but it's kind of low in the front. I will show you guys. I will prove it to you that it's not my best look. I look better with low, lower riding, even though I hate low ride stuff. I would, I, my body looks better in low riding. You I would look kill, like elongated, right? Like yes. you don't, yeah. I would kill to look better in low riding. Like I would have. You look cute in low riding. 
Mm. You have like, you know what you have? You have like the belly, like, remember when Britney Spears, this is again creepy, but this was the world. <laughs> When she did the first like hit me baby one more time and she yeah. had like the little bit of a belly. Yeah. You have like that. Thank you. I I have a little more, but I will take the compliment graciously. I mean, you are wearing this high, but you also had to fold it over. You're a confusing specimen. Thank you. She It doesn't quite fit, but then it also is too big. We're talking about the skirt. <laughs> this black. They've, they've figured it out. Okay. Wait, okay. Speaking of what Eric Griffin said to you, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Why, what is it with all of Bobby's friends basically secretly being in love with you i watched you on theo vaughn's podcast i love i love wild. theo vaughn i think he's hot as fuck i think his you do yes i think his energy is hot like i love that he just like loves women like i feel that from him but i want to know d is there like any because okay if you didn't see it theo is was like coming on to Kalila hardcore was like can i be the second in line after bobby mm -hmm. and i i was dying to ask you like because I feel like you're like kind of not really responding fully. Is there any world? What's your... What's My deal with Theo? Yeah. I think that he's um, catching a vibe I'm not. And um, but I love him so deeply. He's one of the few comics that I've built a relationship with over eight years. And, you know, like there there's a feeling of like familiar family, like even though he's from Louisiana and I'm from the Philippines, there's like a kindred spirit there that's undeniable. Alligators. You both have some sort of like, <laughs> no, we have, like he has alligators. Predators. Right, big lizards. So he has alligators, but we have the real crocodiles, the 25 right. footers that actually eat people. Um, so he loses there. The Theo much. lives in a creative made up world. Yes. Too. Let's what do you right. mean? He's always talking about someone flying around in a bubble or something. He's like, there was Timmy, <laughs> bubble Timmy when I was a but kid. He did say, fly in a bubble. He did say something that was interesting, which is like, uh, he has um, difficulty like speaking to women or feeling like comfortable around women. So I propose that he is our first male guest. Yes. Yeah. Because I think we're the perfect set of girls to sort of just get that, those, you know, hash those feelings out with. We will pull it all out of him. We I will. want to. And I just love him. I have such a deep love for him. So I think he'd be perfect. What if he like in his head is like editing this just to be like, I love him, he's perfect. <laughs> he's like, and that's how he falls it. asleep. Yeah. <laughs> I guess like worst case scenario, because I he posed that question, you know, I was like, okay, gun to my head, you know, which male comic? Um, when he said Shab, I was like, you do not understand. They're so, they don't understand. They think they know what we want and they're not correct. Wait, so he asked you what female comic, what, what male, male comic? Oh my God, you're <laughs> such a lesbian. It really is real. And I'm not making it up. I'm not making it up. You saw it there. Um, I'm not. Oh, yes, that's about me. Freudian slit. That's what you say when it's a lesbian one. What is it? Freudian slit. What does that mean? Slit. Vagina. <laughs> I miss George. Oh. <laughs> Andres is like, English is my second language. What are you saying? I did not understand that, but now I do. Okay. You, your brain is too much for this world. Okay, but so did he asked you what male comic you'd be into and what'd you say? I said, I feel like I just put this poor guy out every episode, but it's Jamar Neighbors. That's my comic, oh, you know, that's my comedy yeah, crush. That. Wait, do you know what Jamar did? <laughs> what did he Jamar. <laughs> Jamar went to my jujitsu class, which, by the way, I haven't been to jujitsu in a while. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, by the bat wings. Uh, but <laughs> I haven't been in quite a while. Um, but Jamar, he went to my jujitsu class a day. I wasn't there. He went with this girl, Caroline, that goes. And he wore like spandex and he put a giant dildo in it and then just no. wrestled with all of them. And there's one black kid in the in the class, but like he came in like I'm a black guy with a big black dick, and so no one was gonna be like, excuse me, black man, can you get your hard boner off me? <laughs> no. But he just yeah, he just had it the whole time. Why did he do that? Because he's a he's like the best kind of troll. Because he's a version of Bobby. I think that's why like I'm into him. He yeah. seems like he'd have the Bobby antics. In, what? Just because like he would do whatever he's the wild. Fuck? Yeah, I've never. This is I, how many podcasts have I said this on, George? <laughs> Poor Jamar. I'm sure at this point he feels the way I did in Theo's podcast. He's objectified. Did you see what he, he, uh, what he, he posted after it. the first one? What did he post? He posted, I'm never getting on Tiger Belly again. <laughs> <laughs> he was like this. <laughs> yeah, you right, Bob. You probably want to watch. Let's be real. You know, I've kissed Jamar in a, like, I know. In a in a like a short film that some random people were producing, and this was like you know eleven years ago when we were all open micers, and he Jamar walked me down the aisle, and I will say he did improvise the kiss. Was it the ice cream aisle? 
<laughs> I don't know why there was an aisle, but you need to do. <laughs> oh my god, no. Jamar done. <laughs> no, 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 it was completely fine. But he like dipped me and then gave me a big smooch, and I was if like, Brian Ooh. Scalaro did that though. It would be a different story. Right? That is inappropriate <laughs> to bring up. <laughs> Wait, okay. is there a story Who about Brian? No, I, I just like picked him. someone that wasn't as hot as a Jamar. He's very hot, but he's not as hot. <laughs> <laughs> you would never know. Brian Scalaro is some more my type, probably. Than Same me. Right. Right. With me too. Oh my god. Brian Sklar is gonna be so hard in your DMs. You I need guys. to remember that. Your if, DMs are better be closed because if, he's I coming. Know. If you and I I need to remember if you and I ever have sexual chemistry, <laughs> I need to take that as an insult. You like I need to remember that. Anytime you look at me like a little longingly, that's not a good thing for me. I feel like if you um had a camera follow Esther and I <laughs> single hitting on men, you'd be just sorely disappointed at our choices. <laughs> well, they're probably very surprised. Right? Because they don't, they think you're fucking with them. They're like, you're not. Probably from on her, me. but from me, I think I'm pretty approachable. I think guys are like. Not with these new looks. <laughs> 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 not with that pink shirt you wore the other day. That was distracting. Wait, so I heard that we're celebrating something today. I think George has something planned for us. He doesn't want to just throw Cinco de Mayo at us. He wants us to earn Cinco de Mayo. Okay. Well, this is our special Cinco de Mayo episode. Ooh. Okay, so, so uh, we're we're calling this game "Earn Your Sombrero." Um, you know, we live in a in a world where um, a lot of appropriation is happening. Correct, and we're not talking about my earrings. We're not talking about Annie's earrings. So instead of celebrating mindlessly, we're going to earn our right to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Together, we have to get them right. Together, yes, we're a team. Okay. Oh, so okay. we're a team. We're going to, as a team, answer questions George poses for us. All right, are we ready to earn our sombreros, guys? Yes. Uh, so question number one, who is Vicente Fernandez? He is... Um, well, Vicente is like San Vicente. Is he something to do with that? No. No. The street? The famous street in West <laughs> LA. Any takers? He um, he came up with um, Just for Men. He's the spokesman <laughs> and the... He looks like an like an actor, like a businessman. Like he looks very prominent. He is, very. He's a billionaire, probably okay. by now. So Esther, businessman, Annie, billionaire. Do you know who he is? Yes, I do. That's fucking Chente. Chente is a god from Mexico. Chente is a Vicente Fernandez is a Mexican American. Oh, well, he's a Mexican singer. And he has like all like the he's like the Frank Frank Sinatra. So. And then yeah, Burt Reynolds is playing him, or is that actually him? <laughs> like in the one in the red? Does that not look like it's Burt Reynolds playing him? The, if you know, there's a song by Vicente Fernandez that could have been a great name for our podcast, what was which it? is Mujeres Divinas, which is like divine women. Oh. All right, so we got one. Let's uh, let's go with the next one. Wait, guys. hold on. That's that one point for the team. Yeah. Okay, good. We're one for one, guys. Name three Mexican iconoclasts. I thought iconoclast was a like better like a motel. What's an iconoclast? <laughs> Someone who is, for example, I'll give one Frida Kahlo. Salma is. Hayek. I think she's her. an iconoclast. Yes. yes. Okay, that's two. That's two. Uh, we, we've got two from everybody else. <laughs> one, two. Like, let's uh, third. I have I have an answer. I have Hernan Cortez, Pancho Villa. Um. That's so four. Wait, do we need three or four? Sorry. I always lose on um, At Midnight. Like, I never, I'm bad on the spot. But At Midnight was pre written. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, the show's been canceled long enough. I think we can let the cat out of the bag, okay? <laughs> they have fucking writers. They come in. You get there two hours early. I Everything's still, on, a, on a card in front of you. I still always lost. Because you didn't push the thing fast enough? I was psychotic. I would like. <laughs> Um, okay, so wait, we're two I for two. Wait, okay, go okay, ahead. Two go for ahead. two. Uh, one um, more kind of class. Let's. Uh, uh, El Chapo. El Chapo. El Chapo. Esther, point for you. You did it. <laughs> he 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 escaped jail through a hole in the thing and then rode out on a motorcycle. Remember, he escaped Mexican prison. I mean, he, that like, is they dug pretty. A, they if you escape prison, I'm impressed. Ladies, today we are sponsored by Magic Spoon, our favorite cereal. Oh, I love Magic Spoon so much. I'm so happy that they like us. We come in a variety pack and so do they. 
Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts of being a kid, but we all pretty much gave it up because we realized it was full of sugar and junk and stuff that you really shouldn't have been eating. And I know all of us are trying to cut down on things like carbs, sugar, unhealthy food. And then you start to feel like, okay, well, what can I eat? That's where magic spoon comes in. You guys, it's zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and GMO-free. I love that they have a variety pack where you can get cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. My favorite is fruity. It's incredible. If you mix the cocoa with the peanut butter, it tastes exactly like peanut butter cup. Yeah. Just FYI. You guys can go to magicspoon.com slash bathgirls to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code bathgirls at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash bathgirls and use the code bathgirls to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. And thank you to our listeners for checking out Magic Spoon, supporting us and our sponsor. Who did the Mexicans fight on the 5th of May? Um, the uh, Chihuahua. Uh, that is uh, Cinco de Mayo in, uh, in, in Spanish. This one I don't know. I don't know any stuff like this. I got Spanish. This. I got this. No, they fought no, the French. No, Texas. It's a Franco-Mexican war. The French. The French, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, name three Mexican musicians. Okay, I got it. Uh, number one mariachi guy, number two mariachi guy, and number three mariachi guy. <laughs> Who sings suavemente? Elvis Crespo. Besame. Oh my God, Esther. That's what Elvis Crespo. Doesn't she look like she could be in a little tele, even in this outfit, a little Telemundo Is show? Gloria Estefan Mexican? Oh, she's Cuban. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so Esther got one, Elvis Crespo. I have <laughs> Mana, and I'm gonna add Ana Gabriel, who is like my icon. Um, There's, a, but there's who an are- easy one out here. Who are? There's an easy one out here. Name the song, George. Which one? You said there's an easy one. Oh, Selena. Oh, oh Selena. Selena. Oh, Selena. Selena. Was... Selena Nomez. No offense. Yes, one? yes. Selena's good. I think we won that one. Yes. We got points in that. Uh, name five Mexican foods. Okay. Oh, okay. Enchiladas, oh, wow. quesadilla, mm-hmm. tostada, mm-hmm. baja chalupa. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Uh, tacos, burritos, nacho fries. <laughs> Biria. Chicken fries? What? Biria. What's that? Oh, Maddie Matheson just opened a birria place here in LA. What's birria? It's like a stew, mm. but it's very, very good. And um, I'm going to add sope. <gasps> is, um... I love sope. Mm-hmm. There's also... Um, pozole? Pozole. Pozole. With uh, a um, too, the, the chickpeas. Um... Nachos Belgrande? <laughs> Doritos <laughs> Locos is... Taco? The whole Taco Bell star. menu. <laughs> Memorize. Those All right, shirts. we're doing great, guys. We just Flan, got two more questions. Mountain Dew oh. Baja Blast. This is going to be the entire <laughs> thing. It's just us listening yeah, food. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say Mountain Dew Baja Blast? All right, What is more. this soup that's like a grain? It's kind of bluish. You put honey in it. You guys oh. tell me in the comments. I think it's oatmeal. Totally not... No, it's not like oatmeal. It's like Blue. a thin, like... It's like a Mexican cream of wheat, or maybe it's Spanish. I used to uh, make it when I was a bed. That sounds uh, good, though. Innkeeper at a bed and breakfast. And An innkeeper so. is the funniest word. But do you also understand that I was blackout drunk at seven in the morning? Like, Will you move tours? into my home and become the innkeeper? <laughs> I got fired for a reason. I wasn't <laughs> I, in. I was an and, outkeeper. <laughs> and that reason is why I hire, I'm hiring you. <laughs> All right, we're good to go. I need to eat Mexican food the second that we wrap this episode. And that she does mean your pink taco. (laughs) Get it out. Pull it out of the hole. All right, and this one will go in order, guys. Uh, Clockwise, starting with Esther. Say one full sentence in Spanish. (laughs) I'm going to say a sentence. (laughs) uh, Then I will tell the history behind it. Mas un poquito helado. And that is from when I worked at Johnny Rockets and I would ask the guys in the back of the kitchen to give me a little more ice cream when he made my Oreo milkshake for me. And they would always tell me, this has a lot of calories, Esther, be careful. And I said, un poquito (laughs) más. Okay, one point, good. (laughs) Annie? I have a theory that you've the only thing you've ever done is worked at Johnny Rockets. (laughs) I have a theory nothing else has ever happened in your life. (laughs) There's been nothing else. Every story you have happened at Johnny Rockets. I'm pretty sure that you, even when you don't tell us. 
<laughs> okay. Um, okay, so this is my back. I have a little backstory for this too. Um, no tango panocha, solamente la verga. Chupame la verga. <laughs> That's multiple. But it's it goes together, you know? It's like I couldn't pick one. Uh, I have no vagina. What? Uh, only a penis. A suck my penis. <laughs> or chupame la chile. Do you say that when like guys like... Wee wee. When they're like... Uh-huh. And I'm like, chucho. Um, <laughs> I throw a rock at them? Yes. No, I... That was in... When I was in Guatemala, I used to have to do that. But, um, no, I say that, you know, I worked in kitchens. I, you know, I had a little hangout time. I had some beans and rice with a lot of the uh, staff, kitchen you staff. Yeah, I did a little <laughs> fucky fucky with the kitchen staffy staffy and a lot of Mexi Mexi restaurants. But you had an ex-boyfriend. Yes, was- my, my ex-boyfriend, Mark, mm-hmm. who named himself Darky Marky. He uh, was my Mexican boyfriend. We did, um, we got married on ecstasy what? at a party, yeah. We're kind of married. We, our friend was ordained and, and married us when we were on. Are you married? <laughs> we didn't sign anything, so I don't think I'm married, but there was no signing. But in God's eyes, they are. But yes, in That's God's all that matters. It's not going well. In God's ojos, uh, <laughs> we are. Tienes infecciones sexuales. Can I guess what that is? Do you have an STD? No, oh, I thought it was bend over and cough. (laughs) No? Cough is tos. Hold your huevos. Do you have a sexual infection? Yes, Esther. (laughs) Esther knows how to say that in every language. She learned it at Johnny Rockets. Did we win our sombrero? (laughs) Did we fucking earn it or what? Well, I did take four years of Spanish, but I just, I can only, it's, And speaking of cannolis. um, (laughs) (laughs) We're hungry. That was, she said she needed a taco immediately, and the fact you didn't throw that at her makes me I want to dress back. I swear to God, back. George, of course you're going to give me the mariachi hat. <laughs> it's so cute. You're going to look like so adorable. In this is like turning me on. I'm Wait, like are sexy you? Taco. Are those fish earrings uh, because Sea Spiracy is killing all the fish? <laughs> oh. Or you're like, I'm pro fish murder. Speaking of which, um, Valentine Thomas's last post is so illuminating. Really? I think that you should check it out. Okay, I will. Yeah. Someone read it out loud to me because you know I ain't reading. <laughs> that sounded like a long caption. I have to say, I trust my friend Caroline has a company called Fish Wife where they sell tinned fish. Do you want to like help her sell it not wearing that? <laughs> no. Do you want to do- <laughs> Only wearing this. <laughs> And there I trust, like, because I actually am talking to her and she knows all, like, it's all, like, local and the fish are treated well. So I at least feel like that's a good start for but, me. But, well, that's not, it, the tin fish is smaller fish, like anchovy, um, sardines and stuff like that? It's it's uh, tuna and rainbow trout. Oh, okay. Got it. And I, I was going to say, like, the best thing you can do, what I'm told, is um, sardines. Like, eat the small, like, bait fish. Does that... Make you nervous? Sardines are a little bit scary to me. I love sardines. Why? Because they're boiled they're egg. bug looking. The skin and the tail, it's all they there. They taste very good though. Have you ever accidentally had one? No, would how like would I salty. accidentally eat one? They're in salads? Oh wait, yeah, right. she are. never would have come across one. <laughs> um, you don't like Caesar, do you like Caesar salads? Because the, the original recipe for Caesar salad has anchovies in the dressing. And the, they're, they are, I will give you that they are disgusting. There's like a hairiness to them but, kind of feeling. And a, oh, really? I love but you like the but taste? But I like them, yes. But, uh, but the taste overrides the texture. Wow. My favorite meal is um, sticky white rice, mm. boiled egg, and sardines. That's like the, the best. Were you in prison as a child? And this is like the sa- That's, <laughs> that's the a saddest- treat for me. That's a treat. Boiled, like I literally- Who calls it? What is a boiled egg? Like a hard boiled egg? Yeah. Um, it's not. That's not how you say it. <laughs> no, it is. We Am I being demoted to refugee we status talk again? A, we should start just coming up with things that are very normal, I which she says. That's like against my like con- personal constitution. Like <laughs> As I was saying it, I was like, this would be so fun and bonding, and I knew <laughs> maybe someone would want to do it. I can't. You know what? I, I hate when people are like, did you know that when I was little? I uh, Oh, it's so annoying. And right? then you're like, really? And then they're like, just kidding. I, I hate that pisses me off so much i okay and it's as and it's how long they go with it too. Yes. it's so fresh i was dating this guy we, and it was like our first or second date and we were we went in his hot tub and he was like um he was like yeah i was in billy elliot when i was a kid i was on broadway and i was like and he's kind of like small so i was like and he can i think he can sing i don't know so i was like oh cool and then i was like oh that's awesome like that was that weird to like 
have to go to auditions and stuff. And then he just waited so long. And he was like, I just made that up. Oh, like, yes. I'm the idiot that I... Now, then you feel stupid. Right, and now I'm dumb. I'm sorry, I thought you were talented. <laughs> I thought you might have been a talented young man. I I know, I, I hate that quality in people. Just... To... And just like, the hot tub was like, had the purple lights. I'm like looking at him with the purple lights. I'm really full? You're in a fucking purple light lit hot tub talking shit to me? Annie, you just spent... Oh, I did. 10 days with your family for the first time in a year and a half. Wow. It was so good. It what was happened? so good. We all fucked. It was like, <sighs> I miss their bodies. What was it like seeing your parents after so it long? It was, it was incredible. So we went back, Todd came with me. We went, um, brought Rand in the plane. He barked from takeoff to landing. <laughs> it was it was an exercise for me to just not give a fucking shit what other people think, because there was nothing. <laughs> It was a red eye. It was in the middle of the night. I mean, it was absolute hell. And we had given him like two of these pills that Whitney's boyfriend had prescribed him. But so then we get there. It's like seven in the morning. My parents come and pick us up. So sweet. Little old people getting out of their bed. They came and picked us up. It was like running. It really was awkward. Like I definitely like went in deeper than my dad thought I was going to. Like I really... I came and I dipped him. You really tongued him down. I tongued him down. I mean, I was like for a joke. Maybe I should because obviously I made Todd film it. But um, and then, yeah, I saw my mom, went back to the house and then we immediately took their car and we went to Jersey and hung out with Todd's parents for the first week was pretty much with Todd's parents. And we went to the Jersey. We went to the boardwalk in the Jersey Shore and I got you guys presents. Oh, how fun. Wow. Todd's family's amazing, by the way. Asian mothers are like, I want to figure out how to bottle that service <laughs> and sell it because it was the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. What was it like? We walked in. We came in. I took my my mom my mom and dad's car. We go over there. She cooked me pho, my favorite. I, I eat pho like every mm -hmm. day. It was the best pho I've ever had. Number one, I eat it every day. The best pho I've ever had. The next day she made me this like porridge soup. that She just made me every favorite food I have from scratch so delicious he kept trying to show me how to make it and i was like i will never show your son i'm not <laughs> he's gonna be cooking and then i realized like todd's like completely just put on a whole thing to win me over his whole family's like todd's not gonna cook for you i'm like he does and they're like i'm like oh god i have like another six months of him doing things for me right <laughs> right before he's just done wait can i interrupt i recently went to dave's we say with oh, dave's parents Metzler? and I have never felt so loved. We got there. His mom was like, so here's a bag of a bunch of old Happy Meal toys for you to go through. It's so sad that everyone knows that <laughs> your only experience has been at Johnny Rockets. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got like all these old Happy Meal toys from Dave's mom. I was so happy. It's like she was like, I knew I was saving them for some reason. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. When you go to visit your um, spouse's parents, what's the sleeping arrangement? Oh, we had our own room. We slept and in... And is it weird to... The living room? No, we, <laughs> we slept in a room together. In your old bedroom? Uh, Did you kiss? In my house, yeah, we sleep in, in my your old basement? bedroom. Do you guys get kinky? No, no. I'm, Honestly, I didn't feel like I wanted to do that either. No, like, that it does just not... Felt like not... That's not appealing. Also, when we went in, as far as like presents and stuff, his mom had like this care package for us with all this shit that was like like eye masks and like peanuts and beef jerky and like slipper. Like it was just so every genre of things. And then a thing of candy, which Todd was, we brought his parents edibles that I then ate. And Todd was tackling me. Like I was like, don't let me eat any of the candy. <laughs> and then I, I mean, he would turn around and I'd immediately be like shoving jelly beans. And he was like, just tackling me to the floor. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then his aunt came over. They had like a late, Easter because his dad had had COVID during their actual Easter so that all the babies came over his nieces and the whole family and uh his aunt gave us a care package it was like so many wait his aunt his mom is Laotian right? yeah she's Laotian nothing is better than Asian hospitality unbelievable I yeah in terms could... of being baby yes there's no culture that babies their babies more like when my mom comes over she's a little bit um, you know, she's she has sort of like a very like tough energy about her. A little rock salt. We're not gonna a little that. rock salt. Yeah, but, but if I ask her like, "Ma, like, can you brush my hair?" She will do it for two hours. She will clean the whole house. Yeah. She just knows what to do. It's, it's just the most comforting. I thing just ever. get it in this way. I never understood, and it was just 
It was so nice. And his mom kept like, not only would she make the food, but she'd be like, have more, have more. It would just be like placed in front of you. I mean, mm -hmm. which it did get, I started to be like, listen, bitch, you're gonna need to back the fuck up, okay? I've gained about 15 pounds in 48 hours. Does she have an accent? Yeah, she does. Does she call you Aunt Ani? Um, I don't know. I don't remember how she says my name. Um, you're too busy slurping it down, I'm huh? slurping. <laughs> I can only hear myself chewing when I'm around her. No, but she can't. She named Todd, Todd, but she can't pronounce his name. She calls him Ta. She's like, Todd, wash your pee pee. She's like saying <laughs> stuff like that. So she and I and I was like, I hung out with her the whole like for like five days straight. We were just having such a good time. Todd had work, so he was just kind of like editing in the corner, and I was just hanging out with his parents. And we just had the best time. And I was like, you are so annoying. Like, I don't feel at all bad at how annoying I'm with Todd. Like, I'm gonna be more annoying. <laughs> I can bust in the bathroom when he's taking a shit forever now. Like, there's no holds barred, like. She has raised a boy that is, because you know how Todd just, his temperament is like, you could kind of like just do anything around him and yeah. he would just stay calm. Mm -hmm. Because she is that fully, and I've said this to her face, so. And I mean this with love, she's so annoying. Really? What is me, like what's done? But she's annoying and I, like it's always just being helpful. Like it's like, I bought you these pants and I bought, I got you these things mm -hmm. and here are these clothes and yes. I made you this food. Eat this, eat that, do that. Did you, you could get out a loan. She works at a bank. So she's like, get a loan out. Like it's all, the, did you do your taxes? I'm like, that's the <laughs> twigger word. <laughs> they don't say taxes around it me. It is tax season. <laughs> Good reminder to both of you. <laughs> so you and Todd are like real. Yeah, we're real people. I mean, he's my assistant. We haven't made it a fish yet. <laughs> we haven't kissed. But then we went to see my brother. My brother just moved to New Jersey, my older brother. And we hung out with his sons. And his wife is allergic to dogs. So we brought my parents' like old dog's crate so we could put him outside. And then it was too cold. So we put him in the basement. And immediately, my, I feel so bad for my sister-in-law because she's genuinely allergic. Everyone went down to the basement. And her two-year-old son just crawled right into the crate. And just was locked in the crate and would just cry when we took him out. He just loved being a dog, just all in the dog fluff and stuff. Just, I did. I liked that, too. It was really, of course you did. I liked know. being, I was a dog named Jacob when I was little. Mm. I would bite people. Was that your name tag at Johnny Rockets? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sir, you um, really you took in people? the spirit of a dog. Wait, yeah. you would bite people? Yeah, I thought I was a dog. I met this dog named Jacob and I just fell in love with him. My favorite movie was- We finally have something in common. What was, what was your favorite movie? 101 Dalmatians. Oh, okay. And so I just was like, I'm a dog now. My name is Jacob. I like, you pee me, people pet me. And <clears throat> I would bite people and then I would only eat out of bowls on the floor. And it, in fact, like my sister recently posted on Facebook last year, like, oh, everyone check out my sister's comedy special. And one of her friends wrote, Jacob. <laughs> I was like, uh oh. Did you lift your leg to pee? What? Did you pee outside? Did you go full, like, you know, Meisner or did you? <laughs> I think I stayed peeing the normal did way. Did you smell people's buttholes? Probably. <laughs> uh, Kalila and Annie, guess what age Esther was when this happened? Um, she was uh, just f finishing her second year at Johnny Rockets. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say um, four. No, seven. I could call my mom and ask because I don't bit know. Old, a little bit too old, for sure. When did Jacob happen, Esther? Should we call and ask? Yeah, call yeah. your mommy and ask. Mom? What? Um, What age was I when I was Jacob the dog? You're on the podcast. I'm sure you had to be about four or five years old. And what did I do? You're sure it wasn't you, seven. You didn't like the milk bones. <laughs> <laughs> What did I do? You crawled around on all fours, licking people and barking. <laughs> and you lifted your leg to pee. Oh, you did. <laughs> all right, miss you. Miss you too. Bye, guys. Bye. Miss you. Bye. Bye. Do you always call your mom because your dad doesn't always pick up? Yeah, I call the mom's phone. Yeah. Mm. My dad's phone is really old and he. It, it's a jitterbug. It's got like two <laughs> buttons. <laughs> Calls 911 and one relative. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, so what's our present? Okay, so I got these at the Jersey Shore for you and I decided to go full Jersey Shore. All right, I got, I had these made. I got you this. What does it Kalila, say? free sitch, and it's the situation from the Jersey Shore. Love... Situation, is... Mike, the situation is my least favorite guy. Good, then it worked. I loved, probably, probably Snooky. Yeah, Snooky's good. Yeah. I should have, I mean, I would have, it honestly was like what fits on the shirt. Yeah. Because they were doing it, but I went to the actual place that they worked on the show. 
They worked at a t-shirt shop on the boardwalk. Did you watch um, Jersey Shore? I, I will gladly so wear that. Good. So I will take um, the sitch. All right, that's for you. I got myself this one. It's Pauly D and it says, she's definitely a stage five clinger. <laughs> I can't believe that's not mine. No, 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 yours is this one. I get to I open it. Yeah, reveal it. It's Ronnie and it just says. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if these are the things they said or whatever. It was just. <laughs> do I? Do we wear them now? Doesn't matter. Yeah, I want to wear mine now. And I will tell you, my parents were there. My parents came. Todd's mom made us prime rib and was just. My parents were so happy because they've never. They have not been out the whole. COVID. Wait, shut up! Kalila's changing. I want to look. <laughs> you didn't want me to talk to distract people from the fact that. What you're bra is there. that? It's a dance skin one. <gasps> I love dance skin. Dance skin's the best. Why? I think, oh, thank you. I think Kyle and I have the same underwear, if anyone's interested. We do. <laughs> well, we also have that two-person underwear you're gonna have to put on at some point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. We still have Only to do fans. that. Okay, so then we go to Boston, and I see my nieces, and I surprised them in a way that is beyond what I could have imagined. Okay, so my baby niece is about to turn five, and then my, my, my first niece is about to turn nine, okay? They have a giant box, because my brother got some like litter box. So there's a giant b box waiting. So it was perfect human size. So I think they're coming home from soccer practice. So I think I'll just be in the box in the driveway. And then Dana's gonna send them out to go like move the box. So, and it's something that she'd been complaining about because how big the litter box was. So this has been in their their world. So I think instead of like them being super terrified, I'll give them a hint by wearing my leopard print jacket that they know I always wear and I'll have that like showing. What if they like pulled out a gun and shot you? <laughs> <laughs> it would have been, I mean, I'm gonna do this until they're 40, so until I'm dead. My last thing I pop out of is gonna be a casket. Like surprise, I'm not dead yet. Um, but so they, what I didn't think was that they wouldn't associate me with the animal print, but an actual animal. So they come out of the car and they go, I have this all filmed, they go and they go to move the box and it's heavy and I pop out and my niece, my baby niece, she's so like fight or flight scared. Like she was at a soccer practice and then she was in the fucking jungle book. Like she thought, she was like, I thought it was a tiger. She thought an actual <laughs> wild animal, like an experience most children will never have in their lives. Like only a nightmare. She thought an, an animal was lunging out to attack her. Aww. But then she immediately realized it was me and they were so happy, like mind blown. And then I knew my parents were there too. So I go, and they didn't know about Randy either. So then they go in and there's another surprise of the dog. So my niece again, it, jumps like oh it's a dog and then they go in and my parents are hiding behind the curtains so then they see their their legs and they just went and they like hugged my parents everyone was crying it was like oh it was just so, so good it was so fun and then we were there for like four or five days and when you're like, all your brothers both your brothers came too no my older brother and his wife and the boys had to stay in new jersey mm. but we'll get together soon but it was just so fun it was like crazy and we had a birthday party because we miss everyone's birthday parties and which is my parents excuse to eat a cake so there was just this giant cake and we had a little smoke by the fire one night had a great time it was a dream come true getting high with my dad and eating children's food while they're asleep <laughs> is for their lunch the next day is like something i thought i'd never get to do again it was so fun i have a question do you feel like because there's so many children in the family already like Cause for me, like I'm my dad's only child, so there's no grandchildren. So like, there's a little bit of like pressure, but I feel like- He didn't want you That's though, true. So. He actually has actively told me that he doesn't want grandchildren. <laughs> but I, I am curious in your situation, I feel like I wouldn't feel any pressure. Do you feel like, oh, it's taken care of? Yeah, I definitely don't feel pressure at all because wow. my, my older brother has two sons and my twin brother has two daughters. It's like- And your mom never asks you or, mm -hmm. wow. My wow. mom, same with my mom. She has never pressured me once. In mm. fact, she's just like, don't have them. Yeah. Are you serious? And she's like, That's I love when moms get real and they're like, listen, it ruins your life. <laughs> they're like, it's fucking done. <laughs> yeah, well, she knows me so well. She's like, I just know how you love and that's just going to be something that's going to cause you a lot of like anxiety and pain. Even the fish just abandoned you like that. <laughs> that was really... I know, but yeah, she never has never mentioned anything. She's uh, like, you have dogs, it's enough. What about to your sister? Not at all. My sister is not having children. She's decided, she's very firm about it. 
and she feels real real good about it too yeah yeah i don't feel good about that firm decision yet but i i could go either way but i do think i'll probably have kids yeah but that's nice that you don't feel any sort of pressure yeah no thank god and i had i was putting a lot of pressure on myself for a while remember i was having like a breakdown at the beginning of the pandemic because i was like it's taking away like my time to make enough money to feel comfortable to have kids and stuff i was like just another year gone my reproductive covid stole the best years of my reproductive life but look at what we did instead i know we We had another kind of baby To a little baby, baby, baby podcast. Do you guys believe in demonic possessions? What? Esther, I will say this about you. For somebody who is afraid of um, crickets and things like that, you are the most fearless person I've ever met in regards to ghosts and serial killers. Serial killers? Yeah, because when I asked... No, 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 you remember- cereal. She <laughs> likes cereal. <laughs> when we wanted to go visit the LaBianca house, oh. remember where the mm-hmm. um, Charles Manson's um, cronies had killed like the first family? Um, I was terrified. I was like, this isn't a good idea. I don't want to go there. I don't want anything to like jump into my being. Oh. And you were like, it's fine. Yeah. Let's oh, go. I... Well, I, when you say serial killers, it's like, well, I don't think at the LaBianca house, like, we're all going to get stabbed. Like, I, I just didn't think, like, I... I'm Lightning not af- doesn't strike <laughs> twice like that. I am not afraid of anything that is, like, to me, I just call it fake. Like, ghosts, I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in Orgasm. demons. I don't believe in... <laughs> but in that regard, you're yeah. so much tougher than I will ever be because if... I've never admitted this out loud on a on a show before, but I I cannot sleep in my own house alone. I have never really? and will never. I will. I refuse. I'll never. If Bobby goes out of town, you call Theo. <laughs> <laughs> Theo's like, I'm here, girl. Flies from He's Nashville, like, takes the red eye. The, the squizzy squazzy over here. <laughs> That's my Theo impression. But but always, I call my mommy. I cannot sleep if and and because you feel like there's ghosts. Yes, and I and it's so weird because I'm an atheist, but I believe in these like weird things that I've just embedded into my mind. Is it cultural though? I don't know. Is it cultural? Yeah. Well, my sister believes in ghosts. And in fact, every time it comes up, my dad and I, we like laugh our asses off. We're like, she believes in ghosts. Like she's an idiot. Like I just am not scared of it. I also grew up in a house where both my grandparents died in that house. And I always just felt like- You do have that vibe though. The, Maybe yeah. there are in you and that's why you're this way. I'm like- uh, if, You are, there's a grandparent in you. Yes. I'm like, if there really are their spirits or ghosts are here, like I'm their grandchild, so I'm good. Like ghost, I feel like ghosts like me. But your living grandparents don't like you, so no, they don't. That's true. (laughs) There's this um, there's this guy. He's actually a he's from Harvard. He went to Yale, Columbia, and Harvard, but he's a psychiatrist. That's like too much. His name is Richard. His 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 name is Richard Gallagher, and he smashes um, pumpkins. And let me tell you, when he smashes a watermelon, (laughs) it's wild. But he believes in demonic possessions, and the church basically hires him to um, tell them whether it is a mental illness or a demonic possession. He's able to, and the reason he believes this is because he says. I cannot explain certain things. He's like, I'm a practicing doctor and a physician. He's like, the certain things I can't explain is when all of a sudden someone speaks perfect Latin and knows information that has never been told to them before about someone else in the room, including myself. Okay, I have to say that this guy is a genius because he's probably the first person to ever make money off the church. Correct. Right. So, so that's good what, for him. Yeah. I just, I put me in like the most haunted house. I will spend the night there by myself. Like, I just don't, as long as there's like security, you know, I'm not afraid of spirits or demons or anything like that. I and I think so that brave. doctor is a quack. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And that's what uh, p- people are like, oh, he's he's getting paid yeah. dollars by the and Vatican okay or something. It. it also, but it just doesn't, to me, it's like, what was the did you see the documentary it was like the amazing jonathan i think yes i've seen who it. Did it i really yeah. like that where he like debunked all of these fake psychics and stuff and there's a netflix show now too that's like something about spiritual stuff and ghosts and stuff and it is a really really ridiculous that takes but, me, i don't even like a movie where it's i like movies a scary movie that's like feels like it's about real stuff I, it has to be you something really that i think could happen bitch. i don't i'm not scared of ghosts you are you scared moment? of ghosts no, you're not, not at yeah. all. 
No, I'm so That's sick of every smoking. podcast I go on. People are like, do you have a ghost story? I'm like, are you fucking, what are we, in third grade? I have a fucking ghost story. And here I am, like, traumatized. Yeah, but you, like, killed chickens for breakfast. Like, I don't know what you were up to over there. Well. You have a, you had a whole. But it's, it, it's, I feel as though just around the bend, I'm gonna, you know, there's gonna be a face or something there. I think there's energy. Like, I don't think we die. Like, I think there's, like, energy that we all become and stuff. So I think, like, there's that. And I think all of our ancestors are inside us. But it's just not, I just am not. I would afraid. really not want to be one of your ancestors trapped inside you. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I would really not well, want You're that. like my little Anne Frank in the attic. <laughs> I just would not want to be that. <laughs> just like, what is she up to? What, what but I'm they're like to... me, you have to understand. Mm -hmm. Anything like that you're they're like, they're not. There's no way they're, they're like me. I'm them. No. I'm them. That grammar that hates you, it's because you're like her. <laughs> no, it's not. No. You're her. We're not just like all of our ancestors. We are. We're all the same thing. I think you can have some similarities, but you're not just like them. Like I'm my sister and I are nothing alike. My mom and I are, have like very little in common. I am exactly like my dad. That, But like my grandma and I are so different. There's no way. Are you exactly like your mom? Fuck I'm no. a lot like my mom. What? Mm -hmm. It's crazy how annoying my family is. Like they're very, the attention they need from people working at Dunkin' Donuts is unmatched <laughs> and it's never given. The attention is never given. My mom's like, we're going to give you a good rating, right? And I'm like, mom, you don't know how to rate this person, by the way. Are you like your relatives? I'm a lot like my dad. Um, but hard to tell because he was also really old by the time I got to know him. That's why you have such him. heart problems. <laughs> yeah, physically. Um, I'm absolutely nothing like my mother. Which is why there's it tends to be a little contentious because except for the bra and the abs. dance skin and also the fact that she likes to um, she's a fitness queen but I didn't I I didn't want to be a fitness person that shit was just you know I had no choice growing up so that we have in common but she's she's the best I love her I love my mommy so much we it is nothing but I think we obviously are way more like one parent I mean I'm so much yeah. like my dad too we were just laughing my dad was killing he had so many good lines like we were in the car and my mom where this is like me was just calling all of her friends on speakerphone on this car ride todd was driving so tired and just had to it was the exact experience of me just like facetiming and calling people all day and my mom's just calling her friends and be like hey we're on a car ride my here was scott annie's here todd, todd annie's boyfriend's here say hi we gotta go see you later and then she was like who should we call next and my dad's like the police there's about to be a homicide <laughs> like they're just like so many my dad was just like Boom. and i was like this is exactly where i get it it's like the same it, he he just made me laugh so hard. We just had such a good time. Wow, that sounds so fun. It, what I wanted to say, the moral of the story of why I brought that up, Esther, of like demonic possessions is because like, like I think that from a distance, all I'm saying is you can't judge a from girl a distance. Does anyone else on, feel that every time someone says from a distance? I love that song. Is that Vanessa Williams? No, it's Bette Midler. When Bette Midler. From a distance. Um, don't judge a girl by her lack of desire to eat crickets because I genuinely think you're low key the bravest person I've ever met. Just by virtue of having like no fear in regards to like ghosts and stuff. Thank like you. Like you've never, every time I talk about it, you're like, that's not real. Who cares? <sighs> I'm like I, crying about it. She did think the dead crickets were going to jump on that's her. That's true. I thought the <laughs> dead crickets were demonic. <laughs> back to I um I think it's cuz I was raised absolutely with no religion at all. So that stuff is just not on the table for me. I'm I'm envious though. I'm so envious of the fun it must be to like feel the fear of ghosts and it's stuff. Not it's not fun. Or like to believe in heaven sounds nice. It does sound pretty sweet. I'm like, "Oh, that's <laughs> awesome." But yeah. You, I'm surprised you don't like to skydive and stuff. Why don't you just scare yourself? That's the same as being scared of ghosts. It's just a different type of adrenaline. That is like so not, I mean, cause I'm, that's the thing is I'm really scared of a lot of stuff. Well, like, if you don't... believed in heaven, would you want to? Cause you'd be like, if I die. <laughs> <laughs> Like growing up, all my cousins would always go like ice fishing and go on the ATV and stuff. And I would always stay back and sit. You on an ATV is, you look like the little like bobblehead. In the front <laughs> I would like stay back with and sit with my great grandma while everyone, all the cousins went and had Wait, fun. Then we could never have like an outdoors episode of ice fishing. You yes, we can. Try. Esther will be hanging out. She I'm a grown up now. Do the thing. Yeah. We'll get you some We got to nice... get a really elderly woman to sit with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be so fun if we just go in our, our camos out into the wilderness. Yeah. I would do that. 
you know. I I'm think desperate. You'll, do, you'll hang. Can I be just clear? I'm desperate for a field trip, okay? Yeah. Yes. I'm ready for Vegas. I will even go to the outdoors. I want to go to Palm Springs. We I'm, just take her to like an outdoor mall. We're like, we took you to the Grove. <laughs> <laughs> I want a field trip with this Wait, crew. Wait, do you remember when we went to the Grove and they were doing extra yeah. outside? Esther and I, in the very beginning of our friendship, when we were little babies at the comedy store, we went to the Grove one day and it was Mario Lopez and Maria Menounos were doing oh, yeah. extra, Ex extra live yeah. out. And we were trying to get Maria Menounos to talk to us so bad. She had her dog with her. And Esther came, I like your dog. And she's like, thanks. I loved her book Wait, too. <laughs> I know you read her book, right? Her you book were obsessed amazing. with Maria yeah. Menounos. Maria Menounos is awesome. She's like she's a very real... Cool. Girl's girl, like, gives good advice. She's smart and cool. I just love her. She but just seems so indestructible. She, she seems also so loves even wrestling. She's like, she's like a girl's girl, but also like, yeah, you can tell she, she does it all. Yeah, she she does it all. Her book is great. She taught me my favorite thing I learned from her book was like, you can just go to Target and buy like twenty five white washcloths for like spend like eight dollars and then you roll them up in your bathroom and it feels like you're in a spa <laughs> i love being fancy for cheap so i'm like thank you Maria. i thought you were gonna say and she taught you to tie-dye like, oh my god <laughs> she sucks she owes you everything <laughs> no as i do miss your um bad tie-dye your bad tie-dye was so funny because it was so is there like, such it was a just, thing as bad tie-dye yes <laughs> esther found a way to make everything like mud and <laughs> Period stain. And when she go, do you like this one? Go, that one's good. And she's like, Dave did it every time. Every time. I was like, that. Oh my god. I I am so bad at tie dye. She does yellow. It just looks like pee. Like it looks like the shirt was like crumpled up and someone peed on it. That's and then, why okay. I've outsourced it. And now a factory, now looks so good. a dye house does it because I'm so bad. at Good it. vision, poor execution. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm, that's me with everything. <laughs> she's a delegator. I'm a tel dictator. But do you know <gasps> Dick. that? That is actually Tater like taught. a skill <laughs> of successful entrepreneurship is being able to delegate and being able to match your vision with people who you know can execute mm. your vision. So props to you, Esther. You are an entrepreneur for Thank real. Thank you. And Annie, even if someone didn't want to work with you, you would keep them. Annie, bend over and spread your butt. It looks. It actually <laughs> does look almost tie-dyed, my asshole. Because <laughs> from brown to lighter color, it's really... <gasps> Um, oh. We should do a sleepover by Esther episode so we can get some. I will bring you some when I get, I, it's coming soon. And also, can we have an actual sleepover? Yeah. Yeah, wait, Let's who's house? Sleepover. I mean, obviously. If it's, it's not a motel. <laughs> I, Esther and I are dying to get out of our own house. Why do you think she wants, oh wait, you guys, I forgot to tell you. When I came back from my trip, we came back at night, two day, nights ago, I come in, there's more construction in my apartment than has ever existed. Like we've had construction since the day COVID started and it was way worse. Like the whole front of the building is just a board. Like it looks like it got boarded up for the fucking riots. And it was like, and I know it wasn't all riots, but right in my neighborhood, it was hundred percent riots. But so like it was completely boarded up and there was, they had dug up the street in front of it. Like it was comical, but only in front of our building. And we're like, we got to get out of here. We like looked at each other as we we're walking and we're like, this is it, we're done. So then I walk in and I get our mail and there's a letter from the IRS and I'm like, oh no, oh no, it's gonna be bad. And then I was like, don't be negative. You're fine, nothing's hard. That's my new mantra, nothing's hard. I was like, just open it and be positive. And I opened it and it was an unclaimed tax return of $6,000, <laughs> wow. went deposited, went and checked out an apartment or we're moving to Venice Beach in two days. You're moving? Yes. Wait, that's where we sleep over then. Yes. Will you have Do us? Our new yes. Oh, then we can bring our rollerblades and maybe we can like rollerblade together on the boardwalk. Esther, I love this is my idea of Esther rollerblading. <laughs> We're on rollerblades and she's just wearing the wrist guards. <laughs> You're moving in two days. Yes. It's so cute. It's like, and we picked the one bedroom because the sun is so nice. Like it's mm -hmm. like lighting's everything. Lit. I would take a, a smaller, yep, well lit we place did. over a bigger really? dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I hate like poorly lit. We get it Wednesday, homes. Adams. We know. <laughs> You don't need to That's say. That's so funny because where I live, there's so much sun and I'm always like, I look, I literally look at my neighbors with trees blocking the sun for them and I'm like angry. I'm like, I'm jealous. I, <laughs> you and Bobby, this is what I wanted to You're talk to you guys about. You're basement dwellers. Yeah. You guys are basement dwellers. When I first met Bobby, he had aluminum foil in every single window to block out that's the sun. That's so crappy. Okay, well, and I was like, you really know you scary. have money, you could just get blackout curtains. He's like, what are those? He's like, but... <laughs> I bought them in a blackout. But there, there was this experiment done in France where like 40 people went into this cave and lived there um, with no clocks, no nothing. Basically, it's like they couldn't. It was a way to like see how people um, manage themselves, their emotions and what they did in a dark place with no indication of what time of day it was. 
And I was like, this, they should have gotten Bobby for this. Or you now, Esther. Yeah. It's like your dream come true to just not know time and just live in a dark place. Oh. But not knowing time sounds fun. I feel like you are bad at time. Is it hard when it's the arms? <laughs> <laughs> no, Bobby can't read time Projecting. either. Projecting. Well, maybe I was, but you're dumb, dumb too. <laughs> Wait, Bobby only wears digital watches because he feel doesn't like know how to read time. I the only reason you, because you just had people tell you. You're like, can someone tell me what the time is? No, I can read time, you fuckhead. I. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you look up like you're lying? <laughs> because I don't look at, the, I mean, we all have the time on our phone. Oh, here, here it is. 40 days in isolation. Look how happy they are. French people are weird. And you know what? Like two thirds of them said they wanted to stay in there longer. They're and I also imagine... used to BO, so that wasn't a new part for them. <laughs> They're like, we already smell this joint up. I just can't imagine being stuck in a cave. I could imagine if it was like my sister and I, but with 40 people that I didn't know, I what think that would drive me and crazy. Theo? Me and Theo. <laughs> and just one cave. What about just me and Theo? <laughs> Ew, I don't like that you're the Theo. No, I- She's, He's Kalila and you're Theo. <gasps> I think he has a he's a has a funny ener his energy yeah. is really cute. He's very not like a that's why I love him. Like yeah. he just, there's not a he's part of him that's like it, like that masculine like intimidation. Exactly. Like he doesn't have that. He's a, just a sweetheart. Like I just want to hold him. Yeah. Don't cradle. again. He's gonna be like she wants to hold me. No, like cradle, swaddle him. Like I want to swaddle Esther. That's the same energy. <laughs> what that's what Esther's I'm like. Wait, what do you mean? You don't. <laughs> have you ever, guys ever heard of those like um retreats where it's like a 10 day silent retreat yes i always wanted to do and i know i'd get kicked out i'd get I kicked so out funny they too. thought of you doing one. i can you imagine i would you're not allowed to make eye contact i want to go with not, you i bet you do <laughs> try to distract me try how to many sabotage days you, me how many days do you think you'd last I, I would do the do whole it. thing because I like am competitive with myself like that, but I would hate it. But what do you do? Are there things to do? No, you do walking meditations. They feed you mm, like journaling and stuff. Yeah, and, but you're not allowed to make eye contact. You're not allowed to write. You're not oh, you're not allowed to, to write either. Mm -mm. So it's just like inward travel. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's that's hard. I really, I was very much looking into it, and then I just broke up with my boyfriend. I was like, every time I'm like, maybe I should do the silent retreat. I'm like, I no, I just up need a breakup. <laughs> It's like also whenever I'm into tarot cards, it's like, just break up with him. He doesn't like you. <laughs> Every time I'm into anything that's like ghosts and stuff, it's like, because I'm about to get ghosted. <laughs> I will say that I feel like when we started the podcast, we had a different idea mm -hmm. of what it was going to be. Like we thought we were going to, I feel like, get into more politically like hot buttony topics yeah. and fight which i still feel like we might but i don't feel like it's le i feel like what you said the other day I, we're like half mukbang half mukbang half uh, gangbang gangbang yeah like, i feel like we are weirdly more sexual and more foodie like than yeah. we thought we're more yeah. like it's like sweet and savory is what i feel like yeah you know we're I mean? less criminal than we thought yeah we're, not we're just like weird little beings we are not um, we are not a slasher movie. We just yeah. have a really strange friendship. Yes. Which is why I think, now this is just my vote, I think that we should have a name change and a rebrand. Really? It's pre-merch, like merch, so I think this would right. be the time. The merch is like the big, because people are demanding merch, but that's like, I feel like that's when it's official, so we have right. to like get it right before people are repping it. Do you also remember when Clayton was doing our hair to do our photo shoot, and he was like, it's too negative? Oh, he hated the name. Yeah. He hates the name. He well, really what are our options, guys? I, I know that, well, let me throw it out there. Esther, you hated this one, but... Is bitch beach back on the table? <laughs> I, I'm i not a bitch. <laughs> it's so funny that I would say you're uh, like, I maybe come off as the, but for real, you're the biggest bitch. No, I'm not. Like, well, we have, I, can I have 30 seconds of more bloodbath for one moment? What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I, it's not. It The reason bitch beach can't happen. But bitch beach was more like bitching. Like it wasn't like we right. you're a bitch. And also like I don't think I. It's old It's not like a. Yeah. Three old whores. Three old whores might look a little cuter on my chest old than sperm? bloodbath. Or old spermies. I love, I love um, two words that I love together are blood honey. Because I think it's a little dark and sexy and mysterious. And I, I don't, really I don't like think that, that like we sexy. know what that is. Um. What are what are some ideas you guys have? I like have? blood, honey. Bad blood. Really bad blood. I like bath friends. <laughs> <Is that crazy? laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. It's what she calls her duckies. <laughs> <laughs> Your rubber duckies? Sleepover by Annie, Kalila, and Esther. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. She's like, buy my sleepover brand. The podcast. <laughs> 
like naming the show was really hard. That's why I it think we hard. settled on something we didn't all love. Yeah, and Dave hated it too. Oh yeah, did I don't remember. Or he was like, I think huh. he just hated us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we that did might be have. Um, to it. What was the potato one we had? Wild potato. Wild potatoes That's was an option. Not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you, does Bobby like bloodbath? Bobby loves bad blood. He thought the whole time our show was called bad blood. He yeah. didn't realize it was bloodbath. He was like, how's, how's bad blood going? I was like, sweetie, it's not the name, but. I think there's some things we have to think about. Okay. We have to think about one, like what's gonna look pretty merch style, but also like, what do we call our fans? Like we've never came up with a I nickname know. and stuff like that. Yeah. The bad bloodheads. The bath, <laughs> blood the bath heads. heads. Esther's just very anti-blood, I think. I like bath more than I like blood, but that doesn't mean I'm against blood. That means are you into wild potatoes? No. Are you? <laughs> I loved I loved wild potatoes. I was so sold on wild potatoes when we, we were talked delusional. about this at a year ago. Point, we had been we were at our maybe hundred and seventy two. <laughs> right. Of trying to find That a was name. my we Arcale Mary. I was like, fuck it, it's wild potatoes. Do you want wild potatoes? I want blood I want blood honey. <laughs> You like blood honey. I like blood honey. Um, well, plenty to think about. What do you guys think? Um, but I want to say I'm not surprised that this is where we are. Are we taking suggestions? <laughs> yeah, I think it could be something that our fans can probably, sure. you know, they um, know us. I feel you like guys they know usually us know us better. Here's the one thing that it has to look good with. It has to look good on merchandise. It has to look cute. It has to exude a weird '70s vibe. Yes. Of uh, think. Um, Charles Manson's uh, those three girls yeah. that um, those three little devils that did his work for him. But like cute and devilish, that's the thing, right? But um, so we'll leave that up to you, and then maybe we can come up with the best, the ten best ones, and then we'll decide from there. But we are officially, are we officially rebranding that? I think we're officially on the hunt for an awesome name. Right? I'm happy about this. No, I'm excited. Yeah, I don't think any of us love the name to begin no. with. I loved it, but I don't find that it fits what we are. You loved it, and then immediately the first Actually, fan I did. art. Wait, the first fan art we had was the blood. Our blood, and it our made me uncomfortable. Well, also, <laughs> I just remembered. <laughs> I she just, was like, "I just don't like blood." Makes me uncomfortable, and then literally, like one second later, we you were know tagged. what? I take it back. I like it because I'm used to it now. But I'm remembering that when we all somewhat agreed on it, then you guys like move forward forward with it and in my head I was like did we really agree like <laughs> no, I was like agree. I'm not a hundred percent sure but then like I got used to it but I was not originally. get ready for that to happen again anyway guys <laughs> blood honey <laughs> George do you have a name that you like uh baby slugs baby slugs oh or just slugs sexy slugs because slugs <laughs> is like very close to sluts too so mm -hmm. that's fun Slug, <laughs> sperm, I don't know. She Let likes us know, slugs. Guys. guys, she likes slugs and sperms, but but blood and honey bothers her. I, just want to say, I don't know why, but I, I could be into it. I could be. I'll the get only reason I like that is because it feels like the vibe, the part of bloodbath that was the vibe I liked. Yeah. Yes. I do not, like I, what it whatever. exudes. Yeah. I'll oh my you God, that. you guys, her feet aren't touching the ground again. It's so funny. <laughs> I like when people when we get up and it's and people are like she really is little. I'm like it's this is how I feel every time I see Esther. <laughs> I've known her my half my life and every time I see her I'm shocked. So shall we? Shall we? Ride off into the sunset. We're going to ride off into the sunset nameless once nameless. again. But um, I feel like this is a rebirth and I feel like this is a great opportunity to really tap into who we are. Oh, we should call it afterbirth. <laughs> placenta placenta like the live song so offended by that i know oh, i was offended by that so i remember disgusting. the video of that too do you remember the music video oh yeah and it just fell thank you so much for listening to whatever this was and whatever this shall be i've been esther this is annie and that's kalila and you guys you know we want you to subscribe like this video and Put a comment down for the algorithm and tell us what you think we should name the show. Thank you for listening. <laughs> See you guys next week. Just where you want to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>